play a non-real hero in the Pangolier. I mean, true. things can go downhill real fast, right? You look at an EG squad who has been in these tough positions at TI before, has overcome some of them and also fallen short at others, right? They were yep. very close to the highest berth for a South American team at TI last year, and now it's a very long road to get back to where they were, and it's a different squad, so they have a lot to prove. They have a lot to prove to their fans, to the region, and... I mean, this is step one of getting there, and damn, what a tough opponent to go into round one. Triple major champions here on gaming. Everything that has been said about this team, I feel, has been said at this point. Now it's just, can you prove it? Absolutely. Can you prove it when elimination is on the line? We asked that question to Gaming Gladiators at Riyadh. We said, you went through the upper bracket time and time again when it comes to these majors, and you win the whole thing, but can you bounce back when you've been knocked down. They proved at Riyadh they can, but Evil Geniuses, they have been the masters of going through the lower bracket. In fact, it's a reason that they have actually not played up against Gaming Gladiators in one of these major LAN events this year in playoffs. They matched up against each other in group stage time and time again. Here in some Dream Leagues, they'll play a best of three, but when it comes to these LAN playoff games, they actually have not run into Gaming Gladiators. So despite both of these teams going far in tournaments, this is a little bit of untreaded ground. Out. That's an interesting strategy to dodge the most dominant team. You know, just stay in the lower bracket. They're never there. Exactly. <laughs> uh, upper brackets for somebody here. You know, I won't complete that, but Matthew will also not complete the snowball. And at snowball level one, I think it hurts a little bit on this lane. I mean, you really want to get this, like, shard. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Shard or snowball into the tag team level two is the timing you're looking for to burst this Weaver. And we're looking at a carry player in Duracho, who has arguably been the most aggressive carry player we've seen come out in the last few years. Uh, one of the most aggressive carry heroes that, dare I say, it has a history of falling a little short at TI clutch matches. I feel like this Weaver always pops off, but it's a different thing getting that win. And, of course, it's a very different Weaver than a lot of these past tournaments. I mean, this is a hero that scales a lot better, and the damage just ramps up considerably, especially level 20 and 25 talents. It's a long way away, but the Geminate just starts to pound you into the dirt. It's like, what, plus 90 with a level 20 talent, plus 65 now with the buffs. You're looking at over 150 bonus damage per Geminate that can also proc off the shard. Sakuchi going through everybody. It's just a whirlwind of pain. So that is what Dorachi is looking to get towards here. Hopefully with as little deaths as possible, dare I cast their curse him. And EG coming out with their own pace. Shaker last pick mid to combat the Pango. Of course, only one of those heroes is real, as I mentioned. Yeah, it's, uh, well, we have interesting carries on both sides. I think Weaver and Darkwell are a little unexplored in the current oh, and We could definitely do a little bit more digging on those heroes. This mid matchup, it's the same old, same old that we've seen so many times, as you said. Pango, not a real hero. Earthshaker <laughs> also being spammed in the mid lane quite I mean, a bit, so. It's so funny he, like, complains about it, and then he just <laughs> plays it every game. But what can you do, you know? I mean, it is a great Pango game. There's a reason they picked it, right? Very limited rolling thunder control on the side of Ichi. And it's another AoE stun hero to deal with the Dark Willow, pull you out of the Shadow Realm, and then just burst you down. The Mana Burn, also pretty substantial this game. You can get a fast defusal, right? You're looking at a lot of melee strength heroes for EG that just don't like losing their mana pool. So I kind of like what the Pango does here for gaming. And it's a lot of AoE control between the Pango and the Tofu Invoker here. I will say, though, uh, you said it's it's not the best rolling thunder game. I will say he's going to have to be a good driver for it to be a good Rolling Thunder game because he is going to have to deal with Fishers, Ice Shards, and then there is going to be the Overgrowth that's going to be popping up. But popping up, Whisper pops up at the top lane, gets a kill on Celery. So while this is a kill duo for sure, the Dawnbreaker Tusk, Weaver is going to be a hard hero to lock down. That Enchantress, not nearly as hard. Oh, this is a very strong kill lane, and Enchantress generally suffers versus those lanes. I mean, your nature's attendants are only as good as you can stay alive for them to heal you. You just get bursted down in a second, you're absolutely gone, and that's a first blood to Whisper. Honestly, I feel like Whisper's had a quieter season than we expect from him. Yep. And I think this is a, this is time to show up or go home, right? So he has been one of the cornerstones for his team, one of the linchpins. Give him a fast start on a very powerful hero in the Dawnbreaker. He might just run away with it here. Do you think maybe part of that is because of uh, the player we just saw on the screen there, because who's going to be rocking the carry Dark Willow in this game? I mean, this was this South American squad was put together. For, for my money, it was the two superstars from South America put on the same team together. Because on one side, Whisper on the sure. other. Do you think by doing that, it has maybe hurt Whisper's game a little bit more? So they're going to try and go on Ace here, the Bristleback, try and shut him down early, and they do just that. Because and Panda pick up a counter kill. I mean, that was just too easy, right? They still have full wand charges down here. Just living the life, and we're seeing the dominance of the Dark Willow in terms of the laning phase. Cyril's very powerful on lane with the low BAT and, and just the high base damage. Very hard to trade versus. I, I kind of agree. The, the one... 
thing about that, though, is, you know, you could say, well, maybe Whisper's game's been hurt because Mikaz takes more farm, but I feel like Whisper played with arguably the one carry that was even greedier than Mikaz <laughs> yes. for most of his career. So if anything, he should have more room to operate with Mikaz on Steam instead of Hector. But it just hasn't panned out. So this is, again, time to show up. I'm excited to see what they can pull out in this game. And for me, EG has two modes, especially going up against gaming. There's the mode where they play ultra fast with like the bounty hunter type lineups that we're just going to dominate the lanes run at you the game's over 20 minutes this is the other mode where it's a bit more patient bit more consistent with just team fight execution like we're just going to out team fight you in the mid game with big dawnbreaker ultimate coming through earthshaker controlling the fights and then dark willow on cause to help bring up the scale especially against the bristle and if the lanes go their way that's just even better but z smile is here to be able to block out ace and he gets him now the tornado is going to help they actually uh, managed to get the kill on celery on the other side but ace is still dead so great rotation from z smile just the extra bit of damage they needed because meanwhile hiding away from tofu tried to hunt him down meanwhile the fight's still going up there in the top lane as they train out kills both supports do die Duraccio chasing after whisper trying to get some extra damage on him with the hell bear he's going to clap him yeah, if he gets the clap, and he still has this bug on him, it's going to be a ton of damage. Whisper tries to turn around and get the damage on Duraccio, but Duraccio scoots on by, turns around, picks up that double. Big turnaround for Duraccio up here. This lane was not going extremely well for gaming, especially with the first one on Whisper. So they get the double turnaround, whereas bottom Ace still struggling. But honestly, I mean, if you get some stacks up for the Bristle and EG can't contest him that easily, he can always come back. So I don't know if the early start for Ace means too much. It's nice for Pakaz for sure, as he's just trying to rush the Midas down here. That's what you have to be worried about. You cannot give too many kills to the Dark Willow. Early goal, early levels, and getting kills will speed that along. Pakaz gets to be part of yet another one. I mean, part of the reason you want to rush that Midas, right, is the levels, the talent levels yes. are super important for I mean, this I've hero. I've said it all year, right? This is the best Midas hero in the game to me. Yep. And the attack speed is invaluable. The levels are invaluable. Though I will say, I mean, he skilled a point of Cursed Crown Cap. Oh, yeah. That, what, what is that? That's supposed to be levels of stats. Yeah, I Come on. clearly didn't watch <laughs> the last series, if anything. So maybe well, Maka is playing his own version. Maybe that's for the best. Yeah. Five to two, evil geniuses may have a kill lead, but they do not have a gold lead. And that is something that gaming gladiators have pulled the wool over a lot of different well, games the centaur. in the past. The centaur game. <laughs> the backstab. Coming around from behind because he didn't see that one coming. Not that he's going to be too punished for it. Maybe will. He actually runs back in as Cellar with the wolf. All right, this is your Vanguard Bristle timing. So gaming are just trying to collapse with Ace, force the pressure point. And if you use the fact that Willow is not great in these numbers fights. He does have one, pops it, be able to get off the Shadow Realm, but the Tornado is going to help finish him off. And Panda is here on an island now with a creep wave pushing in. Now, like, with these kills raining in on both sides, these side lanes are getting crazy hectic. He does lead Duraccio on that one on two, and he will get punished with the single target burst coming out. And it's a tough lane for Weaver, honestly. You mess up one Sakuchi up here, you're just gone. So Whisper's going to have a very strong start. Pakaz gets forced off the lane. And now it's a question of, do you go back to bottom here? I mean, your tower's just gone. Pakaz is going to TP in. He wants to defend this. I mean, the tower basically paid the price off the catapult. It's just a question of, can you get something in return? And they have to gobble up Celery. So some more levels for Pakaz. And it puts gaming in a position of, do you run back down here with the Vanguard Bristle once more to finish off this tower and kick Pakaz out again? And if I, you, gee, you can't provide another death on this Dark Willow. Yeah. There is, uh, both teams are definitely going to be assaulting this bottom lane, I think. And that, that kill actually puts our train protector to some pretty key levels. I think, you know, you get to level three, you have one, two, zero. But then after that, you can actually start getting those levels in living armor, which will help the Dark Willow, but also help protect this tower. See, Smile going to be victim here of the first rolling thunder. Matthew is going to try and come in and help him out here, though. What can he really do? Does he snowball, pick him up? But then they're going to be next to the tower, straight up for a tornado EMP. The Dawnbreak ultimate, though, it's going to come in. We're a little bit heals. It's not enough. You're stuck inside. They block off the rest, so they're not pursued. But ultimately, they do still lose their mid laner, despite heavy rotations and an ultimate use from Whisper. That was a lot of resources off this dual off lane that yielded nothing here. They're even going to bring Panda into mid on the bottom wall. Matthew's just going to die to the rock your top pretty much a disaster in mid for eg here this is not going well matthew will make him reach for it but uh ultimately they do still get that kill seven to five is game of gladiators might find a six kill back to back to back they are just running over evil geniuses in this middle area panda will be able to get away to the trees thankfully and heal himself up a little bit but this was the alternative to making that second move bottom just let ace clean it up on his own because all the skirmishing mid brings the supports and yeah nah, this is just demorphic 
efficient way to do it, right? Now they're gonna try and cut up a cause. Quinn on the hunt, but didn't quite spot the Dark Willow due to the part it's nighttime. And this is where Dark Willow suffers. If you lose your tower fast, you get forced to the jungle. Now they see him underneath the ward, but he is caught inside the brambles. Quinn's gonna take a lot of damage here. And it's gonna pursue, but Bakaz cannot afford another death, and that leaves Panda alone, threatening to terrorize. Ultimately doesn't throw it out. Cannot save Panda, cannot save their Smile. tower, and see Smile's rotation may only net them this support kill. They're gonna be able to get him with the dust, but now the Rolling Thunder is gonna be troublesome. Bouncing back off the cliff, see Smile trying to get a cliff push off, does manage to get that. They have to chase away Ace though. That damage was beginning to build up from the quills. So, terrorize, put to use. Yeah. Gaming Gladiator's just forcing reaction. I mean, what's happening? Top. They're getting so much. They're gonna get a tower out of this. They have to get kills off this. They cannot afford to be losing towers for nothing. They will punish Celery. Can they get to Rachio next? Oh, no way. He still has ult up. Skelly Boy is just doing the work here while well, everybody's distracted. Quick bottle refill into mid. Uh, the efficiency in this early game is really nice for gaming right now as they're picking up the pace. And again, just straight to see Smile. Ichi just can't solidify the map right now. No, they are constantly scrambling to try and save Ooh. somebody. And they, oh, not quite enough. And Quinn... Should have played more Mango. buckle means that now he's going to be nailed by that Solar Guardian. He's going to be changed on goodbye. Ten minutes in, finally, Evil Geniuses get a little something to work with, though the damage is done already. They have a Train Protector, and they've lost both their side lane towers. That's a big misstep, right? When you're rolling these early games like this, it's all about momentum, especially based on the supports around your mid hero. That's a big swing. It gives some breathing room for EG in what was turning just to be a route on that laning phase. And what I was mentioning is, for Pakaz, when there's this much early tower pressure, Dark Willow's not a hero who wants to be forced into the jungle super early, right? You don't have some crazy farm spell in Glaives or Sven Cleave or something. You want your hand in Midas. Yeah, and right? then you're okay you getting go there. Jungle. But it's a slow hero, and I think this Bristle pick, exploiting the fact that you have Enchantress to back it up, so you're pressuring both tier ones on equal sides of the map. It's not a situation Pakaz can respond accordingly to, whereas Duraccio, he's gonna be happy to join all these fights on Weaver, man. He comes in, he throws a bug out. You have good minus armor synergy. Nailed him. And that's one great thing about the Dark Willow. Later on, oh, yeah. might have a harder time being able to kill Seller with the Untouchable, but early on, you've got this Bedlam that'll get you free kills on an Enchantress every time. Maybe it's support on support. Dark Willow is really nice against that hero. Oh, I, I do think it's a very good Dark Willow game. If Bakaz can get there, he's going to wreak some havoc in the fight. The question is, can he get there? And right now, these gaming cores are pulling out ahead. And the thing is, if you misstep on this map, once, Roshan is going to melt, right? You have Goo, you have the Bug from Weaver, you have Alacrity from Evoker later on in the game. Untouchable to be able to tank the Roshan. Lucky yeah, shot. I mean, there's a lot of minus armor poke that comes through from this gaming lineup. Even just the single point in Goo that hits you, it got buffed, right? It's a lot of minus armor straight off the bat, even with the low levels here. It hurts. Bouncing around once again. Rolling Thunder will find more and more kills. Gaming Gladiators. Now they're going to put some pressure on this mid tower. This is something Evil Geniuses cannot afford to give up, but can they stop it? No, There's no way. Smile being gone, and too many heroes here, all five. I mean, I love the fact that Gaming Gladiators make a move like that, right? Getting the pickoff, but then just bringing all five and saying, go ahead, fight us. Just not a lot of zone control for EG, especially dealing with the Enchantress summons this early, and they know the Weaver can rotate. Can't keep these towers up, and that's a lot of minus value for the Treant lineup here. Treant would prefer to fight around these towers. It's not just about living armor healing them up. It's like, how does Panda get a good fight with overgrowth, right? A lot of the way you do it is you take defensive fights around your tier ones where the enemies dive you, and it sets up Treant's spells. All three tier ones gone by 12 minutes. This is looking like a classic gaming game of, we're just gonna run through the objective so fast, you don't have a chance to respond. And it's Ace leading the pack, a very good sign for them as, I mean, he has been the linchpin for this team's success all year, right? Yep. In fact, the uh, Game of Gladiators, their run through the majors early on in the season was based around a lot of the fact they just figured out like what Ace needed to play to give them the win condition every single time. Do you feel like that yeah. that changed, though, in the recent meta? I mean, for sure. A lot of that hero pool was summons heroes, it was aura builders, it yep. was things like the Underlord that he was almost Underlord. undefeated on. Yeah, I mean, where are any of those heroes now, right? They're gone. So you have to kind of adapt, pull these new heroes in and make them work for you. We're starting to see it with things like the Primal Beast and the Bristleback. That is something gaming have had to adjust. It changes a lot of your itemization across the board. EG will go for a quick pickoff here on the support. Go for, of course. Damn, that is a... 
Big swing there from Whisper. It always surprised me how much damage that does, but he does have a 1-4-4 build, so very much focused on being able to throw out that damage. He did go for an early game Blade Mail, start working towards uh, Echo Saber BKB. Blink Dagger, though, finally up for Evil Geniuses, and this is where we could see Evil Geniuses do more than just find a single hero pickoff. They've got their team fight hero online with the Blink Dagger. They're going to smoke up almost immediately with three heroes. It's a decent time to fight if you didn't have the shield run on Quinn right now, who just finished Defusal, because Ace is clearing through the Ancient stack. So he's kind of taking the defensive orientation on the map. You get these towers down and go back to your side of the map. It does give space to EG. Can they find anything? They vision of Duraccio right now. He's sitting underneath both a ward and a sentry. I mean, this is the dream. Shikuchis, this is a perfect... Oh, echo him on the stack. Geniuses. Yeah, they're just going to catch him with the Echo. It doesn't have to be on the stack as long as they get him stunned right now. Mid Shikuchi, chain that stun and finish him off. Evil Geniuses. Blink Dagger reveal nets them a very big pick off on the enemy carry. Pretty much what C-Smile wanted with this Blink. Get a big core kill. Quinn's gonna try and turn it back. Arcane Rune. Oh, Ice Shards tried to stop the Rolling Thunder from being able to catch Vikaz, but it just wasn't quite good enough. Vikaz overgrowth and the Fissure Block, but the support damage is there to help get the kill on Vikaz and Matthew. A little bit late there on the snowball to save because as a result, and Quinn's feeling good. He's got an arcane rune, so he's just going to keep on chasing. Yeah, they're going to break Whisper in. No Dawnbreaker ultimate to join the fight. He's going to have to do it the hard way. They have the burst for oh, Tofu. Oh, beautiful. Fisher actually catches two more on top of the kill onto Tofu, so maybe separating Quinn from his support. They can focus down Celery up next. Big hit from Whisper. We'll finish him off. Dominating for Whisper. Yeah, you were right, Avery. Now's the time for Whisper to pop off, and he is doing it right when his team needs him most. Five, one, and three in 15 minutes. He's got to lead the fights. He's the one hero for EG having a tremendous game here, and it's going to be catch up duty for Picaz with this Midas. C Smile also had a very slow early game, but of course, these are heroes that you kind of expect to be behind in this game for EG. Right. Versus Enchantress, the start that Bristol had, maybe the lanes go a little better for you, but. The objectives, there's just no easy way to defend it. So you're going to play with less map, you're going to play from behind, but you can take those types of fights with this lineup that has a lot of turnaround. And that's something gaming you're going to have to think about. That exact type of fight bottom, how far do you extend into overgrowth, tusk snowball and shards, fissure block? This kill would be massive if they can get it. He's used to swashbuckle. There goes his mobility and there goes his health pool. Yeah. Got it in an instant. That is what EG are looking for right now. And you can't split up too much of your gaming. You own a lot of the map. Can you be this greedy on it, right? That's the big question, at least before big defensive items come out. I mean, Ace, probably a hard target to go on, but even then, that's what this Tusk pick is designed to do with Max Tag Team. Give you the physical threat. Prevent Ace from just controlling all of the map. And Ace is about to, like, with his Aghanim Scepter now complete, and then I feel like once you get the Shard, that completes the sort of run at you territory. It's very hard to turn around and kill this hero, and he can chase you down pretty easily by leading with that Shard. Tons of burst damage to follow it up. So Gaming Gladiators could definitely, you know, solidify things a little bit more by playing with Ace. But Evil Geniuses, I'm sure, are well prepared for that kind of action. And the front line is going to be important for Gaming because it is Ace and it's kind of only Ace. You don't want the Pangolier getting jumped first in the fight and you definitely don't want the Weaver getting jumped first, especially when Dorachio just went Desolator. This is a very aggressive Weaver itemization here. Yep. It's not some early BKB. It's not more stats. It's just raw damage, more minus armor amp to go along with everything else they have too. That's the part that's super nice here, right? The physical synergy is just off the charts for Gaming. If it lines up on any core hero, there's not a lot of armor outside of the living armor here for EG. Yeah. Dark Willow not exactly known for buffing up the physical resistance, so you're going to melt. And he Roshan, yeah, it's going to be very fast, very early. This was a gimme, right? I think uh, that death on Quinn was definitely a moment of reflection for Game Gladiators. It was like, okay, we've been greedy enough trying to play all three lanes and play very deep on the enemy side of the map. Let's go ahead and regroup a little bit, <laughs> focus on the objectives. They'll take the, the uh, Aegis for their side, give it over to Quinn. So now he can play a little bit more frontline. Yeah, you know, he dies once and they'll make sure it won't happen again. That might have been the fastest Roche under 20 minutes of the tournament. Yeah, that, that thing had minus 33 armor on it. <laughs> at 17 minutes, that is ridiculous. And gaming, they're gonna try and translate this Aegis into more, right? This is not a team that generally sits back with their objective timings. They wanna translate them around Ace's timings, and just up the pressure, especially if they can stay on EG's side of the map without getting pickoffs. They're gonna be really happy about limiting Picasso's space. 
Which again, he's not on one of these heroes that can shove lanes out quickly like a Sven or make up for the lack of room. At some point, you're just gonna have to fight them back. I like this positioning from Gaby Gladiators, just taking away the double ancient camps here on the uh, left side of the map. Whisper, though, I mean, they do have this global capacity where Whisper can at least always play away from his team, so he's trying to really farm up that bottom part of the map. He's got his Echo Saber working towards the BKB. They're definitely focusing on a later game timing. The Aghanim Scepter is almost done for the Dark Willow, though. In fact, he could buy it out as soon as his courier actually gets to the secret shop, which is all dark right now for evil geniuses. If you're EG, I feel like you almost want gaming to run past a tier 2 or something to give you the fight setup. Spotted Panda, but they do have the stun there. Tofu reaches out, but even still, double damage on Quinn helps a yeah, This lot. is not a fight. Double damage Aegis, which means you're just going to give up more of the map. This, this is a ticking time bomb. Like, you can definitely turn this game around if you're EG. At a certain point, you, you bend, don't break, get that one team fight, then reopen the map. But right now, I mean, uh, do you want to go into this ball? How well do you feel like oh. this version of Weaver scales? I think he scales better than some of the previous versions, for sure. Okay. Uh, the new shard, plus the talents for the, the Gemini. It hits real damn hard. Zero can be really scary in the late game. I, I think it is still a hero that's susceptible to getting bursted, and, you know, maybe he's not as terrifying in an overall team fight. but when you have some of these other cores that can help pick up the physical damage slack, then he's just great, because the bug goes through, and suddenly Pango and Bristle are having a field day, right? Yeah. You're, uh, you're amping the damage of everybody on this team. That's what's really nice about the gaming lineup. The, the scaling synergy is nothing to scoff at. We're gonna make a quick smoke, try and control all the Ancients here. Continue to limit Picasso's room. Does? Yeah. He might get caught. Yep, they're gonna hit him with the tornado. Team has to respond here. Shadow Realm TP away, but the cold snap was still on him, so he couldn't actually complete that one. Oh, here comes that Rolling Thunder. Overgrowth is gonna be able to stop him. Snowball, though, didn't go through. He's actually on to Quinn, so he wasn't in a position to be able to pick him up. Oh, the burst. Sam goes in, almost enough first damage. Ah, and Matthew is there with the final punch, but it is a blow that is good for EG, but the fight is not. EG is going to lose more members here as they've already lost the two. Looks like Quinn, he's searching for more. He's like, you guys got this kill, right? All good. I'm gonna look for a fourth kill out on the map. Maybe they uh, is it a little good? bit too greedy here. Does not have a TP though, so he's gonna be dying. 21 minute wisdom. Finds him with the quills. Oh, Panda! Panda, get it! Yes. Okay! What? Hey, he got the wisdom rune at least. <laughs> Gives up his life to get the experience for his, himself I mean, and his team. I don't know how many players get that rune in that situation, but Ace gives up a little bit of a freebie. Speaking of freebies, one thing about this Bristleback, Tormentor is always a freebie for him. Solo it up here. That's gonna be a nice grab. Map control paying off for gaming as they continue to run through these. A little bit of a weird death for Taraccio. I think he time lapsed super early. Just didn't line it up. Does get a Deso charge out of that fight, however. And I mean, he gets the BKB. He's kind of invincible unless you straight burst him off the Echo, which we've seen. There's a lot of interrupt for the Shaker jump in this game until C Smile has his own BKB. It's not necessarily reliable to just going on one of these cores versus the Invoker. Versus the Pangolier if he's not the one getting caught. So BKB timing's really important for EG here, particularly when they come out relative to Taraccio's. And I mean, Bloodstone already done for Ace. Yeah, he's big. The BKB combined with the Shard especially, allowing him to be super aggressive. Good kill if they can get it, but he's already popped the time lapse, and that's gonna pull Matthew way out of position and up on top of the cliff. He'll wave goodbye, spotted with the sun strike, but nobody's close with the stun. Still looking to be able to chase down some heroes. They know Whisper is gonna be somewhere close, and they got him with the goo. So he's gonna be slowed down significantly, trying to get away with that hammer. Panda will cover him with a bit more slows, but the bug is gonna latch. They'll have vision to Whisper. They're gonna take the Fight. Echo Aegis ran right out. On to Quinn, right as the Aegis has run out. He's in trouble, he's already dead. Oh, what a turn. Is Picasso in good position, but look at Duraccio and Ace. They're both hunting on to Picasso right now, trying to finish him up with the Quills. Duraccio commits into the base. He goes to finish off the enemy carry, but another Shadow Realm. Duraccio oh, is in trouble. Oh, no, no, he's overextended himself. Instead of getting the kill on the enemy carry, he's got himself killed instead. Panda is going to be left alone here with the damage dealer pushed all the way back inside the base. EG can't really keep this good situation going for I mean, them. They're healing in the fountain coming back. Okay, a punch up in the air does get him killed, but Ace is 
way far forward, and there are too many members of Evil Geniuses. He has stumbled into all of this. Now it just leaves Celery all alone. Now, we did get that shard from the Tormentor. That'll help him get a little bit of distance here. I mean, you're looking but for the surely, full team wipe. A Blink Dagger, a Hammer, and they'll finish him off. Just a matter of time here is the physical burst. Winning EG a fight on the turnaround. Oh, they, they won't get the white, but I mean, I mean, the fight was so delayed that Gaming Gladiators heroes were up all again. I mean, they're super happy with that, especially by Cause, right? He gets the Weaver kill, doesn't even die here, and just everything on that turnaround was great because the age expired the second C Smile jumps in with that Echo Slam. They had it down to a T there. As Gaming were trying to force that fight, you can't really blame them, right? They're trying to make the most out of this duration running out. It's just the smoke on the other side. They weren't expecting it catches to. It does get disrupted by the tornado, but it just doesn't matter. You have enough lockdown to follow it up. And it's just about running down the supports while you can. And this Bramble into Shadow Realm coming up for Fakaz is just perfect. So massive. So massive that he gets this kill. You can see how much gold he got out of that. We saw at the end, the chart, he got the most gold and most experience out of anybody in that fight. Massive win for this hard carry Willow that is only uh, gonna get stronger and stronger. I mean, I talked about the combination, Duraccio on a Weaver, right? It has to be one of the most explosive combinations in Dota right now. Yeah. You know he's gonna have some deaths on the hero at the same time. He's gonna go in super aggressively and make a huge amount of space. It's just a nice edge. Yeah, he is a man who rides that line constantly. Exactly. And he, he surely was confident going into this series because he has been playing a lot of pubs of it. In fact, he played five matches recently. Oh yeah, only lost one of them. So he's been practicing the Weaver, had to feel good about it going into this series and they had a great start. They still have a big, big lead. Game of Gladiators still control this game, no doubt about it. It's just they've given a window, an opening for evil geniuses to now strike and they're amplifying the bkb time right now you have bkb done on whisper and on c smile and then you can push towards your what next you item for because which is going to be the hurricane pike so these heroes on eg are tanking up whereas that was your bloodstone timing for ace and he just got melted through it so he's going to go into like bots lotus here on the bristleback he's not really getting too much tankier in the next few minutes here for eg if you end up in another fight if you're gaming so it's going to come down to Duraccio and the BKB he picks up on the Weaver. That's gonna limit the amount of burst EG can pump into the Weaver, and it pretty much should guarantee him a time-lapse here, at least a better time-lapse than he's been getting in these fights. He's been getting forced out early, generally not what you want. He'll lead the charge. Wants to put it to use here. Still looking for Deso charges as well. Now, the potential Roshan spawn time has started, so both teams are going to be thinking about Roshan. Gaming Gladiators probably a bit more than EG, but EG can finally contest. Felt like that first one was probably too much for them, but this feels like a Roshan they can actually oh, fight for. Oh, <laughs> This is a dangerous game, man. You're showing all these yeah. waves versus a Blink Echo Slam Shaker alone. You don't know if these smiles there ready to pull the trigger, and he'll have to time lapse out. So it's really a game about who bursts who off the jump, who's tanky enough to survive it. The Hurricane Pike on Pakaz, like we're seeing here, it's an interesting item choice, right? I, I think you have options of going Manta, for example. The Dispel's pretty solid. This is going to be a lot tankier. The Hurricane Pike is also super nice in this game versus the Bristleback, or even some of the Weaver and Pango later on in the fight to recreate some space, get you another Shadow Realm. Sure. Kind of like the idea. I mean, it's also a standard itemization for Willow. Absolutely nothing wrong with it here. He is going to need to start speeding along. He's got to get the BKB, he feels like, next. But then Octarine, super important to hit with that level uh, 20 timing. So you can have that kind of near perma shadow realm obnoxiousness. That's what it's all about. Late game Octarine plus neutral item for extra cooldown reduction. Just get permanent shadow realm, then you're a god. I like this a little bit of efficiency. They stacked up the ancients so they could clear it out at 27 minutes. So they go into the smoke with tier 3 items right as they spawn. I mean, of course, you're still going to stick with the Grove bow here. Yeah, that is definitely true. Because they're going to stick with that one for quite some time. Yeah, it'll be smoke on smoke gaming. They're just going to meet him up here. They want the next Roshan. Remember, that Roshan happened super early. The next one's even more valuable. And they're just going to run into him. You see him. He's going to run guard. instantly. Go straight for Durachu. Is the chain stun going to land? Is it enough? A small moment with no BKB. 
Duraccio now gone. Five at time left. Oh no, Quinn got himself stuck on the cliff and he can't actually chase after Pekaz. Pekaz, who's stuck in this dead end. They have to get on top of him now, but now the Shadow Run TP will get out. No stunts, he's getting out. Oh no, a buyback from Gaming Gladiators that now puts them at a point where they can't immediately capitalize. They do manage to get Panda, so there will be one member down on the side of Evil Geniuses. We'll see whether or not he buys back to contest this Roshan, or if this is enough space for Game of Gladiators to just go for it. Got Matthew's buyback as well, but of course it costs you Duraccio's here, who time last back in, used the BKB and found nothing in that entire fight. He gets jumped once more. So you're going to feel good about getting this Roshan, but not nearly as good as you would have felt getting it for free. And they'll put the Aegis on the Weaver here. Not a bad choice, right? I mean, at some point, you're just going to have to make sure you can man up and play the fight aggressively, wear through these ultimates. The saves and the disruption have not been enough to buy him the time for the time lapse. Yeah. Ace is still having a fantastic time in these fights, though, and he's oh, now yeah. completed a Lotus Orb on top of the Bloodstone, Aghanim Scepter, and Boots of Travel. So. They're going to make sure they can keep playing the map and try and keep uh, evil geniuses from uh, being able to expand too far out there. They're just going to be locked inside the base. And that's the thing. Like, EG, they're playing these fights in a way where you, you're shutting down the Rocky. I mean, it's a tri-core lineup, right? Like, all these yeah. cores are scaling pretty hard. They all have good synergy. Sure, you kill the Weaver, but if it costs you too much, can you actually win that fight afterwards? And the only real consistent damage they have going into these later portions is the Dark Willow. At some point, Pekaz has to be able to stand there and win them that long fight, kill multiple cores after they commit Echo Slam, you know, Solar Guardian onto Duraccio. Right. That's what you're saying. Ace is big and yeah, he is big and bad. Now they are going to be going, I was wondering, where's the break mechanic come in? Because you're right, they haven't really been addressing this uh, Bristleback all too much. We're going to go for a Shadow Blade on the Earthshaker. We'll see whether or not he completes out the full out Silver Edge. Obviously, Shadow Blade, the invisibility is super important. Yeah, I don't know if you're going full Silver, silver Edge here. here. I, I feel like they're aiming more just for the Tusk Axe. That's something that can shift the way these fights are played. Displace one of these, especially Ace on the front line, displace him into your burst. That's a very different scenario. Right. So that is something gaming are racing against here. I mean, they're not racing, right? They're still 15k up. They are controlling the whole map, cruising through this game. Still have ages for three minutes. Could very well be just be a high ground force here. I think they should, because I'm looking at Matthew, and he's got an Aghanim Scepter queued up. Yeah. So you do not want to be trying exactly. to still break the high ground when you're dealing with Aghanim's Tusk. So I definitely want to take that advantage. At least get yourself one or two lanes of barracks before that item comes up. It would feel nice to go high ground here, especially with Weaver just hitting level 20. Oh, Talking yeah. about this hero scaling, I mean, this is one of the big timings, right? Plus 90 on the Gemini. Has the shard as well. Yeah, that kind of flat damage buff is going to be super impactful in this window right here. Meanwhile, we have we don't have the armor items. Whisper is trying to go for the AC, which would help a lot against all this physical damage and minus armor, but not there yet. Still EG, they have both supports out on the map. Doing a decent job of holding this net worth even while the space is really limited. This is way better than being stuck in your base right now. And it is a tough high ground to crack. You have the Tusk Shard, you have Fissure that can block people off on the Radiant ramp, isolate a hero. Somebody gets bursted, then you go back and found heal. It's definitely not the easiest high ground, particularly for a Weaver who, as we've seen, is pretty versatile this game. Be another solo tormentor from Ace. Yeah, who wants it this time? Oh, they already have all of them. Nobody. It goes to us, I guess. Nice. What's your shard ability? <laughs> you get to listen to me for once. <laughs> very nice, very powerful shard. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn, gonna get some chain stuns here. BKB is available. Do they have anything to stop uh, BKB TP away? No. Not yet, anyway. And it doesn't look like anybody, I don't see anybody going for anything. Like, Quinn's going Octarine, not Basher. And Bristleback is going to be going for Akaya. So that is going to be a problem. Nothing in the short term. It'll only be the Basher on Pango later. Quinn Opsort. Satanic for the Weaver. Definitely nice here. Now you're suddenly 3,000 HP. Dyer's Way harder to burst him off the magical killed. damage. We're getting Ooh, to the final 60 the seconds of that Aegis. So now has got to be the time for Game of Gladiators to pull that trigger and at least try and see what okay, they can do. Well, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, we tried. <laughs> Good effort, guys. It's okay. Satanic will heal him up instantly. And well, they got the Living Armor on the bottom tower. Do you want to go hit mid instead? I just don't think you can force the high ground here. You don't have a great way to siege it. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, 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 like, what's the point of chipping away at that tower if it's just going to get healed up by living armor? Exactly. Anything, you, so. You'd rather just build the lead and farm the map, play for yeah. the third Roshan, or at least a team fight that EG is probably going to bring to you. And yeah, if you can catch the supports on the map, because Matthew has been getting away okay. with a lot right now. That is a good item to take out of their hands for a while. Matthew does blink back into the range of Tofu. He does have enough mana. Tornado is going to be used. Is there any more disables left from Tofu? Use a lot of them, and oh, the damage just enough. Matthew almost got away with Courier Murderer there, but does ultimately get murked. 22 to 18 with an 18,000 net worth lead of four gaming gladiators. Finally putting a stop to the supports that are farming out on the map. Uh, this is going to become a real test of Dark Willow Carry right now. How strong do you think this hero is? Because we've basically seen gaming exploit a lot of the weaknesses of it, right? The slow pace, the inability to defend your towers or join these early fights. The fact that when you lose a lot of these neutral camps, I mean, for any carry, it's really bad for Dark Willow the Midas. Doesn't feel great. The cause just had a very slow game. Decent amount of AoE damage. Yeah, so now's your time to pay it back and you know, show why this hero is a late game powerhouse. Quinn, gotta happen soon. Gonna try and get some revenge for Tofu. Rolling around here, they do have the vision of the cause. Are they gonna focus him down though? Another Shadow Realm gonna be popped. They're gonna terrorize. Instant BKB from Jirachi. Who wants this kill? And he wants it bad. He couldn't get it in the last engagement. BKB plus they have the uh, Dawnbreaker ultimate coming in. Quinn. Neither the goes for Quinn though. Quinn gonna be the target. Swashbuckles away from that final hit from Whisper. But Cause is still in trouble and his BKB is now down. What does he do? He's Keep out. away. See smile. Same thing here. Oh, he barely gets out. Oh man, that was a close one. <laughs> the Gemini hits off this Weaver when you get minus armor down. There's no saving you. I'm surprised that EG get out of there with everybody. Yeah, I think that was just the, the Shadow Blade that got him away ultimately. Garachu is having a tough time sticking on the targets here. I mean, there, yep. that is the one downside of gaming's life. There's not a huge amount of lockdown and control, right? It, it's kind of just, you just want to run into EG and slay him with the, the right clicks here. Yeah, outside of Tofu. And Tofu, is, he's doing his best, but... It's hard to control this Dark Willow in the Shadow Realm right now when your only real AoE spell outside of the Invoker is the Rolling Thunder and they've been jumping Quinn. Did get the cheese out of Quinn on that as well. So technically, you know, you got through one life there. Kinda. I like uh, what Tofu's doing right now. He's just like hunting, right? He's ghost walking, running around at high movement speed. He's got a gem as well. So he runs into, say, the Earthshaker with invisibility or he finds some sort of ward. He's constantly checking for vision to make sure evil geniuses do not feel safe pushing outside of the base. And again, trying to limit somebody very important here, Matthew. Still, uh, what was it? Thousand gold away from that Aghanim Scepter. It's looking like Gaming Gladiators, I think they're likely to get the third Roshan, but it means they're also probably going to be facing up against the Walrus Kick High ground. That's the thing, the, the Walrus Kick is really nice for stalling the game, but it doesn't help you in that Roshan fight, I think. Especially if it ends up being Dire side, where gaming can just abuse buybacks. Again, there has to be at some point more consistent damage coming out from EG so they can win a longer fight. Otherwise, I think gaming are going to be happy to throw lives and then just take the longer extension. Sure. Win it off that. I almost wonder if Evil Geniuses... I'm sure they are going to contest Roshan, but I almost feel like it would be better for them just to, to say, go ahead, take the Aegis, try the high ground, see what happens. It is a route you can go. Again, that, it, that comes down to your conceptual understanding of Dark Willow right now. Yeah. Just how hard does this hero scale in this particular game? Silver Edge for Pakaz is definitely going to up the capability in the fight, especially versus Ace here. More attack speed, more damage, crits, everything adds up, and... Walrus kick online for Matthew. He eventually grinded it out in this game. The lead has been built to 22,000 gold for gaming, but he eventually found some space, which is going to change how these fights operate. And I mean, you've got to just instantly go for the fight here, right? If you want to get a fight in, maybe before some buyback, set yourself up for the Roshan, which is going to spawn soon, and you know it. Now's the time, and it'll be a smoke from EG to try and find something on the map. It is a powerful tool to be sure, but is it enough to cut through a 23,000 net worth lead for Gaming Gladiators in this Roshan fight that's going to be coming up? 45 seconds until Roshan spawns. Both teams going to be playing for it throughout this three minutes. Duraccio, he just completed his Daedalus. We also have some tier four items. Very important, Spell Prism on the Dark Willow. So he may not have the Octarine, but he's got the next best thing, a free 12% TDR. CDR is always what you want on this hero, especially with the talents coming out. I mean, gaming, they're closing in on some big ones too, but they're not there yet. They're level 24 on Duraccio. Something to note, he went 
the Ascetic's cap here. Okay. This could be really big in the fight because you might not expect the extra status resistance on the jump trying to burst his Weaver and suddenly he lives with 3400 HP. If he's the one that gets targeted. Well, I mean, it's Duraccio, so <laughs> he's going to be in there. That means Duraccio does have to, like, really aggressively go in. Otherwise, I think if they get the initiation on Quinn, then things are probably a lot better for EG in that regard. They have to find the Pango the Weaver. There's not really a, really a way around it because Ace is just way too big, man. He just finished hard. 4,600 HP right now. Do also finish this Assault oh, here off man, Whisper. Oh, man, dies fast. Yeah, it's gone. It, this is just an impossible contest. I mean, how do you even get an angle in here, right? Okay, so evil geniuses do not contest this, Roshan. They are going to have all of their resources for a high ground defense, and we'll see what gaming gladiators, what their strategy is to break this high ground. This is a go high ground ages. You have everything you need. Not much is going to change in terms of how these fights are going for you. So you have to devise a plan right now. Think about it. Understand, someone is getting kicked in. There's potential to fissure block the ramp. You're going into overgrowth. You're going into... Maresca, <laughs> the pack. It's going to have almost permanent Shadow Realm. If you can't get on because he's going to kill you in these long fights at this point. Damage is creeping up there. Other big items coming in soon. Sea Smile working towards an Aghanim Scepter. The Silver Edge is going to be on the side of the Dark Willow instead. And the Assault Hero, as we already talked about, for Dawnbreaker. Continuing to grow. I mean, is there something you see that Game of Gladiators want to wait for right now? Or is it they're just waiting for a better opportunity? I mean, you, can, stage? you can wait for more items on Quinn. Uh, this Pango still has a lot of room to evolve. In a sense, you can wait for some of these level 25 talents if you really feel like they make that difference. But honestly, I don't think much changes about how the fight is going to go, right? It's just a question of, are you jumping the right heroes on EG? Do you see them? Or are you willing to just let them sit base until you have 50k gold lead? Damn, why not? Well, that, that's what Tundra would say. Best way to uh, siege the base is perhaps just building more war engines. There's, a there's the kickback, first one of the game. And there's a time lapse. And immediate time lapse from Durachu, who's still playing a little forward here. The thing is, you're happy to trade that if you're Matthew. Yeah, they're getting damage on all three of these tiers. They're going to kick a pop. Right now. They know that evil geniuses are strongest when there is just one lane being pushed in. There's the kickback again. Ace going to be in some trouble here. Lotus Lotus Orb. He's going to be pulled in with the snowball. Quinn's going to try and rescue him, though, with this rolling thunder. Ace has his Lotus Orb still protecting him. He's going to run out of here. Quinn, same thing. He's going to roll on out away from this base. How much damage have you really done? Overgrowth is actually going to be used on Quinn. The burst. He's going to be in big trouble. Tornado comes through. Is that enough to save him? No, he ends up falling because an half health trying to get away from Duraccio, who is tearing through these heroes right now. Snowball pickup picks up Whisper. He's going to be pulled out of position, though. Blink away. Nice. Whisper over to the side here. Can he get back to the fountain? He's getting away from this one. Ace, yes, his quills do manage to finish him off, but he's at half health right now, deep inside the enemy base. The rest of his team, though, Game and Gladiators, focused on the objectives. Yeah, we'll go through the heroes. Back. These buildings are a way easier target right now. You still have Aegis on Duraccio. They ate the cheese. Literally a buyback from EG. A break, a break, first. back is dead! They see the opportunity. One small second is all it takes to be able to finish him off. Seasma, oh, what help? Oh, it, is. Is it? it might be enough damage. It's going to fall all the way to the back, but it's not quite enough. Now the damage starts raining in a kickback. One life down for Duraccio. Is he going to respawn? He's going to try and no. wash him, but not quite landing. Time lapse to get the other position, but there is Matthew on the other side. Too many stuns. Game and gladiators are not able to break <laughs> evil geniuses on the high ground. They get a tier three and that's it because they split the difference here and the kickbacks are just devastating for a lineup that can't take the fight super deep. All the BKBs got wasted really early there. Christ. Man, the supports from EG doing work in these high ground holds. Their spells are so annoying between the overgrowth, the kick, the shards, the snowball saves from Matthew, right? I mean, he is MVP in this for sure right now. He gets multiple cores out on the brink of death. Whisper lives with under 100 HP, and Sea Smile lives with barely any after this impetus to down to 25. I mean, just Solar Guardian beautiful kept team him up. fighting. Yeah, this is where this team shines, right? I talked about the two modes that EG have. They're either going to run you over, or they're going to try and out-team fight you. That is one of the strengths of this lineup. And they're showing why. It cost them some buybacks, but they are happy to trade that for a big Aegis timing, especially when all their cores stay up. I mean, ultimately, Game of Gladiators, they got a Tier 3. 
out of that. That's all they got. They almost got the barracks. They were focused on the objectives. I guess they also got a buyback out of what? I think Panda. Both supports. Bought back. Both supports ended up having a buyback. So economic damage, but it did cost you that Aegis. It cost you the cheese. You still have a refresher shard on Duraccio. But Gaming's not the best refresher shard team. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. There's nothing crazy. He did get level 25 out of that as well in the Weaver, so he's fully amped up here. But that's one of those high grounds where it's like, all right, that went pretty wrong. But the yeah. next time, what's our plan, guys? Are you willing to take that next time? Like, you got two buybacks out of the two Well, that's what I'm saying. What's your plan when you do it again? Yeah. What changes? Somebody's getting kicked. I mean... The one thing they had going for him was the Lotus on Ace that reflected the snowball. Yeah. That's a nice mechanism, right? Even if you get kicked in, you stall it out, and then you just go from there. Let's go ahead and take a quick listen in onto the game of Gladiator side after that fight. We also just need to not over-focus on these racks. Like, the racks are not going to win us this game. Killing their heroes and building an enormous, insurmountable gold lead is going to win us this game. Don't, don't over-focus on these racks. Play this slow and calculate it. Great insight there. Gaming Gladiator saying, yeah, we were overly focused on the barracks. We're trying to end this now. We don't need to, guys. We can play it slow, and you, can, we, you said you could just go ahead and wait it out. Get a 50,000 net worth lead. Yeah, I mean, it's right in the sense that if you get a lane of racks in this game, this game, does anything change? No. Probably not. No. The way you win this game is you need to kill EG's heroes. You have to win them in a team fight. And, I mean, a lot of times you're going to get baited on this Rax and give them a good team fight out of it. And right now, all of a sudden, EG out on the map, right? Still 40 seconds for Dorachi to come back up. But they're getting a lot of net worth out of this, a lot of breathing room. And Ags on C-Smile, a blink on Whisper to make sure this Starbreaker gets applied correctly. And he also has that Starbreaker cooldown. This is a oh, six-second yeah. Starbreaker on a Dawnbreaker with Deso AC plus the Shard. I mean... You get three or four of these off in a fight, it's hard to lose it, right? Yeah, because it's not the only damage dealer in town. Exactly. So some of the hidden scale for EG is starting to show itself. And of course, because working towards that six slots moon shard. What, we're talking about the damage the backpack. Breaker, but what, what is, he's going for a scythe of ice. Well, I mean, you got to bow. I mean, not everybody can carry the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we get a little bit extra control. I mean, I could see it, right? You get the Echo Slam, you follow it up with the Solar Guardian, you land, you then can sight the vice. And like, it is a ton of chains done. It's a good set. When you choose to, to jump on somebody. I mean, he probably asked what he should, should have built, you know, because, of, yo, chill out, boys, bro. I, I'm still a carry. I got this, man. Don't kill him all, man. Speaking of because, he is getting close to level 25, which is uh, pretty big. 100 attack speed for a hero that is already pumping out serious damage. I mean, you get the attack speed, you get a moon shard, you get a pirate hat. I mean, how much do you need, really? You know, at a certain point, it's too much. These are valuable talents. And of course, a lot of these fights, I feel like, still come down to Matthew. I mean, Matthew has been, to me, the linchpin of the GG team for a long time. He's the biggest shot caller. He's their drafter. He understands how these fights are going to go. But he's really what sets the fight up, right? If you get the good punch kickback into the burst, if you get the big snowball saves, that's what's winning EG these fights. Maybe they have enough firepower to just take it straight up, but you're still looking at a 24k deficit. You're still looking at three cores for gaming that are on top here and all continuing to scale. Game of Gladiators, you could see what they were talking about. They're definitely playing it a lot slower, but it's also because they've given Evil Geniuses a chance. The game has changed quite significantly where EG is no longer holed up inside of their base, whether it's just purely because of the, the map push that they've gotten or also just confidence, they are not hiding. It's time to smoke. Or maybe they're hiding right now. Hey, <laughs> they, are, they are pushing back to their base at the right time too. Game of Gladiators have gone for a five-man smoke. I mean, double damage on Duraccio. That's what's signaling it here. Oh, Ace is going to TP top, so they feel like they're not going to find anybody here. Just want to get all the lanes in off this smoke. Daedalus can fit, completed for Duraccio as well, by the way, so uh, this is about as strong as Weaver's going to get. I mean, there's not much left in the tank, right? Yeah. Now, this is a carry that can operate without boots. That's the number one nice. But you need to see Smile. Goes invisible. No detection. Need the help of Tofu to catch him. See Smile, it's already too far away. Maybe a slight error there from Gaming Gladiators having ace lead, but he's also the person you, if you're gonna run into five heroes of EG, you want him on the front line, so. I mean, to me, 
this game is almost even because so much of the net worth for gaming is on these supports, but can you use it, right? Yeah. Can Tofu and Celery have the impact they normally would have in a game? I mean, how many of these heroes are you going to be able to just sit there and rain in the impetus is on? You can't touch the Dark Willow. You yeah. might not see the Shaker. There's snowball saves that can disjoint. Like, and maybe part of the reason he's not so focused on trying to scale up, he took a pit stop and went for more utility. He picked up a Lincoln, so right. that's going to try and combat some of that. Uh, I mean, that is not a moon shard, so that tells you all you need to know. <laughs> exactly, which because how many moon shards is too many on Dark Willow? Two. Okay, well, he was thinking about <laughs> the second one, but he is <laughs> he's uh, now back to wave four and set a swift blink. I mean, he's also getting close to being slotted here. Yeah. Also pick up his level 25 talent, and I mean, we're at 47 minutes. This game goes to 60. You're going to get the next set of neutral items. And it might go that distance, because we've seen EG be very patient about holding the high grounds going in these late games, right? They are a team that has had Mega Creep comebacks. They are a team that has been there with us at that point, in fact. <laughs> with some of their members, at least. And this game could definitely go in that direction. You can get very weird at this point, because you're maxing out. And finally, a Tormentor. Goes down for EG. I think they're first of the game, right? I think all the others have gone to Ace. Yeah. Is there any shards that they really would have liked? I guess the Ice Shards is kind of annoying. The upgraded Ice Shards. Who cares about the Curse Crown upgrade for Because? Well, Fisher's a nice upgrade, I guess. That Dark Willow Shard is nice, but yeah, you're not in a range to use it a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, not on a <laughs> carry Dark Willow. Nah, it's definitely not. Actually, it's probably bad because you're just inflating your network. That's actually a good point. Minute and a half left until Roshan is up. Now, it could be up right now. Evil Geniuses are not in a position to play for it. Do you think they're giving this up again? This is a Roshan you can start to think about fighting for sure. I think you have a lot more staying power if you can keep the Dawnbreaker alive, especially and you're just looking at, again, that six-second Starbreaker with the Hex. It's a lot of control, a lot of burst that doesn't necessarily rely on the big Echo Slam anymore. That's the valuable part of this Hex, right? You can go and find the Weaver, find the Pango, Hex him up in a Starbreaker with like a Totem follow-up and Tag Team. That might be enough. Then all of a sudden, you can hold your BKBs, hold an Echo Slam, start to take that longer fight that's been the problem the whole game that I think still favors gaming for sure. That's when the support net worth on gaming side really comes into play. Like, you get stuck in a Roshan fight with buybacks, your BKBs are down, you're just taking man fights into these gaming cores. All of a sudden, the two supports are going to make that a world of pain. So I don't know. That Roche fight, it's a very tough fight for EG to take, but it is starting to get doable. You know, looking forward, I, we're talking a lot about this game and how it's going to progress, but just thinking about this game, no matter what happens in this game, thinking about the series, I feel like the composure that these two teams oh, show yeah. and who who ends up making that final mistake in the game, I think it's super, super important for the series because it does look like this is going to be a marathon. This game one is anyway. And you're, a, you're at the brink of elimination. Mm -hmm. You can't make mistakes right now. The TI pressure is going to start to get to you here. And it can't come down to one team fight which determines a game which might determine a series. Hey, for the first time, Evil Geniuses will have a chance to play for Roshan on their favorite side of the map. Radiant side. And this is very good for them, right? We're talking about these extended fights. Well, if you don't have to do it into the buybacks that are instantly there, you feel yeah. way better about that. Because all of a sudden, yours might not be too bad. Especially if Whisper goes down, you just buy, you can instantly stole or Guardian straight back into the fight. You don't even need to wait for that long TP. There's some global capability here for EG. We're talking about the buybacks. I mean, which are even up right now. It's everybody, everybody but Celery. Everybody but Celery. So yeah, this is going to be a straight 10 on 10. And here comes the big man himself. Over the Roshan side, he goes. Evil Genius is ready to play for it, but Gaming Gladiators show up just in time to contest. The five band smoke, they're going to wrap around. Send the skellies in. They get some idea. OK, nobody <laughs> from Evil Genius is home. Where are they at? Any amount of vision. Look what at you're this. looking for here, so you can get the jump. Look at the wrap, man. See smiles up so far. But they're also prepared for this. Celery is in a position to break it with a very deep ward sentry combo there on the far left. But if Game of Gladiators don't see this coming on the right hand side, oh, they spotted Celery. Okay, the he's gonna be done. Oh, this Roy, he's managing to get away a little bit of distance. They couldn't finish him off, and now they go straight for God. They try and get the Rolling Thunder on top of him. They force the BKB usage out of him. Evil Geniuses are trying to reset right now, but the Rolling Thunder is constantly in their face. Whisper, blinking over, knows he needs to be able to help out their Dark Willow. They do have to blow him up. 
both. He's gone. Duraccio's dead, but they can see Smile in exchange. And Evil Genius is now on the run. You have to play for the buybacks here. You have to regroup if you're both teams, in a sense. They've lost sight of Bacaz with that Shadow Blade. He's getting away. Five seconds for Matthew, but he's now been caught by the bugs. Can he get this Snowball Blink away? It is unlikely. Trying to cover him with the Tornado, but there's nowhere he can blink far enough. He will be caught by this as well. Game of Gladiators with that extra pickoff, especially since C Smile didn't buy back right away. It's looking like Roshan is theirs to take for the fourth time. Uh, EG does not want to buy back two heroes into running through the Vision, running through the Invoker to try and take that. And will be the Basher done for the Pangolier. The Rolling Thunder did a lot of work that fight and a lot of the damage came out from Duraccio. A lot of it was into Picasso who ended up living and he just gets bursted down. Another time-lapse buyback forced out of the Weaver but he'll get it back with the Aegis here. So a pretty acceptable outcome if you're gaming right. Especially yeah. with the fact that Celery broke that smoke and lived off of one hit. Okay so Tofu does consume that Aghanim's Blessing. So we've now got the Sun Strength. Double Cataclysm going on. Yeah, I mean, you don't have the best stuns to use it, but... Yeah, I'm not <laughs> Hey, you never know. Depends what Quinn can get for them, I suppose. Yeah, the old bash into Cataclysm. But once more, you are faced with this high ground. And a almost permanent uptime Shadow Realm. Two more seconds here. We'll get the early game. Hey, gonna be put to use here. Ace heals himself up with the Bloodstone. Dawnbreaker. Raining in. The damage is not the best. They do try and break him again, but Ace is just causing enough of a distraction. Whisper now tries to go in, but the Varus is already gone, and he's going to have to jump away. They manage to get the sight onto the Weaver. Four staff getting him some distance, and that is just enough outside of the sight of the Dark Willow. Couldn't complete it. Couldn't take away that Aegis. And Game of Gladiators can now keep up the pressure. So that's EG trading a Rax to keep Matthew's buyback here. That is how much they value the Tuskar in these fights. I kind of agree with it, right? I mean, you can just buy the Tusk there and take that fight. But like we heard, the Rax, it doesn't mean much at this point in the game, especially when you have a Dawn who can just clean up the lane anyway. They will retain all their buybacks outside of Pandas, which they traded for Duraccio's and Aegis up for three and a half minutes here. So you're going to have a two minute differential where you don't have Duraccio's buyback and your Aegis expires. So if you're gaming, you kind of want to use this Aegis. On the flip side, if it goes really wrong like it did the first time. Like if he dies after being <laughs> yes. kicked deep inside the base? It's pretty terrifying, right? It's going to be so important in how they use these Lotus Orbs and Lincolns to protect that hero. We are almost at 40,000 gold lead, but it doesn't There's matter if I get kicked. Can you get the chain stun? Not quite enough. The snowball was put onto him, and Zorachi already used the time lapse, so he pulls Matthew back, and now Matthew may be forced to use that buyback. Really nice grab for gaming. That is what they want, because now you're putting them in a position where if Matthew dies again, this high ground just gets broken entirely. I see that in Picaz, he's just raining down Hellfire Rachio, right He's going to get on top of Picaz right now, but of course, Staff does get him a little bit of distance with the side device. Now they get the Terrorize on him. That's going to be the first life unless... No, he does fall. Did get Matthew's buy. Matthew, can he get the kick in on the revive? Duraccio instantly pops BKB. C Smile looks to jump forward. Pops BKB, but Duraccio popping his own BKB to go for Quinn instead. Now with the kickback on him, they blow him up instead. Ace coming in deep, and look at the Fisher. He's blocked off right now. With his BKB, he can protect himself. But immediate rip pressure. C Smile trying to get up, but Panda was in deep. Because on the front line. Because he's the Don't buy. He jumps straight in, takes out Duraccio. Panda gave him an opportunity, and Picasso goes straight for the throw. Now he's going to finish up both Ace as well. The Bloodstone, the Bloodstone, C Smile. He gets C Smile. He gets something out of it, but he still falls. How much can EG get off of 100 seconds with no Weaver, and they know it? That's Look the, at the smile courier. kill. He's got mangoes coming in from the courier because it's like, I cannot take any moments to go back to the base. I have to maximize this 90 seconds. I agree. Every second matters here if you are EG. You have potential to throne gaming back if Avery you get a good fight out of it. There's an arcane rune up there. That is the dark willow dream right now. Because he sees it, but he's not going to see it. Oh, a missed opportunity in the night, and they will just push down the lane. I mean, this is not an easy push either, right? Because you know the rest of the buybacks are up for gaming. Yeah, you can equally throw it straight back their way here. Daedalus completed for Bacaz, flying it in now. You can eat that Moon Shard and finish it up. And man, he is hitting so damn hard in these fights. Nobody survives a full burst from the Shadow Realm if they're stunned for the duration of it. Eats the Aghanim Scepter, now a Daedalus. Tofu. Good cut though. Tofu is going to be cutting the wave here. Yeah, it's gone. They have 
no uh -oh. other free. Evil Genius is not protecting their waves. A massive push coming in the bottom. It looks like they may not even be able to get a single lane of barracks out of this. Skelly Boys, meanwhile, are cleaning up a tier three. They're gonna take the tier three tower. Who's pushing who here? You got Wait nothing out of that. Absolutely nothing. I mean, you got the Dark Troll Summoner, but you got absolutely <laughs> nothing out of that if you're EG. Though, you did feel good about winning that team fight, and it only cost you Matthews by for another Aegis high ground push that does not end this game. So if you're gaming, it feels like you're getting frustrated at this point, right? You have 30, 40k gold lead, you have Aegis, you have refresh shards, you have cheese, and you're just not getting enough out of it. Maybe you just need more Lincoln Spheres. I don't know. <laughs> Start stacking I mean, we've seen up. that before. Uh, we've <laughs> seen four or five Lincolns all being put onto one hero just yeah, to just, try and protect against this. Just try and stop something about how these initiations are going. We do have another Lincolns on Tofu. We have a Lincolns now on Duraccio. So, yeah, I guess they agree with the assessment. I mean, just start massing Lincolns here. Yep. Now, it's going to be an interesting note because that buyback cooldown is going to be up in two minutes. Another minute after that, and we have 60 minute items. So is Evil Geniuses going to be able to get their 60 minute items, or is Game of Gladiators going to be able to take control of the map like they've done for pretty much 80% of this game? It's, it's interesting. I mean, gaming could try and push up and, and play off of it. You know you don't have this Matthew buyback, so if you find the Tusk, I almost feel like that's the most one of the most important ones to take out here, because you're not going to find Bacaz without buyback in this game. Right, it, it's probably just not going to happen when sure. you can play so far back. And he has so much damn gold to play with here. That's because who is 9, 3, and 12. He was pressured pretty early. Uh, but throughout this later game, I feel like his, he's done a very good job of keeping it clean. Whisper even more so. 7, 1, and 15. One death. Only one death for him who's been going into the middle of these fights. Played this game very damn well, and a, a lot of these fights are also coming down to kiting Ace, making sure there's not a hero around him that heals, because Bakaz will kill the Bristleback incredibly fast if there's nothing to Bloodstone to heal off. That's how this matchup's supposed to work. And as much as we're setting this up as the potential of, of Evil Geniuses coming back, they could just slip up in the next fight and oh yeah, don't get Megas. They have to keep a constant composure in this game. Some may seem calm, cool, and collected, perhaps. Oh, one and a half minutes left. Are long gone. <laughs> <laughs> one and a half minutes left until we get these 60 minute items. Those are massive game changers. And we're also going to have that Roshan potential spawn time starting at the same point. And Matthew is. He's getting to the Tusk Dream. Like, you have that Axe, but now you have Aether Lens on top of it. It just makes your life way easier. And full Octarine completed. Of course, he does not have to save for buybacks since it's on cooldown for three minutes. So you are looking at some low cooldown spells here. Eight and six and a half seconds between the kick and the punch. With an Aether Lens cast range and a spell prism to back it up. If Matthew's alive, I feel like somebody is dying on gaming side. The scary part Almost is... Almost the highest priority at this point. We saw in that last fight, especially with the Lincolns, like... Without a buyback, he has to jump in. He has to somehow get through some of the, around the, some of these Lincolns, right. get the kickback in the first place. But then even if he gets the kickback, his way to stay alive is snowballing that person. If he does it onto, say, Jirachi, we saw last time, he, he got the time lapse off. So he has to just kind of free fall and hope that his team catches him. They have to stop Jirachi from being able to get off the time lapse. Otherwise, he's guaranteed dead. It's a risky move. I mean, that's why they prioritize that Tuscar buyback so highly. Yep. They're willing to give a lane for it. Just guarantees the first initiation doesn't matter too much. And maybe that's like one of the pieces missing here for gaming in terms of all the itemization is a hex of their own. Just something to give them the chance at the instant hex on a blink and like you never know, right? He can mess he can mess up the snowball cast, doesn't hit it exactly on time. You have a chance. Especially with Invoker being invis all the time. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, yeah, I mean you're just maxing it out here. X machina for Dorachio. I mean take your pick right now, right? But uh, double everything, never bad, and another DD rune to boot. So we are getting into the ultra late game here. Some 60 minute items, we'll see what they opt for. Cataclysm, gonna get him some reveal. It's gonna spot Panda, who with the on disc is gonna try and walk away. Blink out, but he's gonna be lucky to survive and he will not. Yeah, but if you're gonna die on a part of the map, that's where you wanna do it. That's true. And 
Also game. create that space for EG to farm some neutral items. Yeah, they're getting something out of it. They got the pirate hat on the Dark Willow. They got that massive attack. <laughs> they got the Sitch and Desolator yeah. on the Dawnbreaker, which is probably the best item for him as well. That is a really nice pickup for Whisper here. <laughs> so funny. I, I see Panda swap out his neutral item. I'm like, oh, what'd he get? Oh, no, he's just swapping in his Philly Stone. 61 minutes into the game, need an extra 90 GPM while he's dead. Another, yeah, wait, whoa. Like he actually went for another Stygian Desolator. See, Smile wants to start pumping out some single target damage. Too. I mean, it makes sense, right? They, they aren't always going on the same target here, and their individual physical burst means a lot when they're going on these big core targets, especially at the end of these fights. If you're cleaning yeah. up a Bristleback, you're cleaning up a Weaver. Makes sense to me. These are some nice items for EG. If you're gaming, you've got to match it. Ace is deciding what he wants here. He's still thinking about it. But it's just Mirror Shield on Celery. You know, it's okay. Ex Machina for Duracho is definitely the big one here. I almost wonder, oh, like, I wonder if Ace, Ace to go. if he has Mirror Shield as an option, maybe you put him in the front to start hitting some of these buildings. The problem is he just starts getting Shadow Realm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the problem. They don't have a hero that kills the building fast enough before Bacaz starts wearing you down. Well, he is going to be cruising now. Force boots picked up on okay, him. Okay, so they're just going for the economic advantage, right? Double force boots between Ace and Quinn here means you free up the boot slots. Yeah, exactly. Get another item. Put another. that gold lead to use. Quick reveal. I mean, we haven't seen any combos of the Cataclysm, but it has done a great job of revealing evil geniuses the few times they actually get outside of their base. And it's going to be yet another Roshan. What is that? Fifth Roshan of the game for Game and Gladiators? It'll be an Axe Scepter. Or, I mean, who at this point? Yeah, I'm not sure if Duraccio ever wants to give a time lapse to anybody else. Nobody wants it. The rare game. <laughs> I mean, Tofu, you already got one, man. I'm not sure Celery wants uh, little friends this late in the game. Oh, they're gonna give it to Quinn so he can eat his own. I okay. sell it back. So, more economic advantage here. Is there enough gold in the world for gaming gladiators to break the seemingly unbreakable evil geniuses? I mean, not really. That's the thing. They're, this game is getting capped. <laughs> yeah. There's just not that much left to spend on. Yeah, the, like the biggest thing was like, okay, we can make some some minor tweaks, right? It's like 5% here. Yeah, exactly. But the 60-minute items, those that was the biggest splash we were going to see in a while. That's so, where so much of this game came down to the understanding of Dark Willow as a carry, which is not something a lot of these teams are used to. If you're EG and you believe Bacaz will carry this game with the matchups he has, no matter what, you were happy with the high ground defense hold strategy. You're just wearing through this lead, and the 30k gold lead at 65 minutes doesn't mean a whole lot. It honestly doesn't mean much here. One thing to note about this, due to these item choices, we also have now uh, Arcanist Armor on Panda, something to know. But it does mean that uh, evil geniuses have the pipe with hat advantage we've seen sometimes in these late games like a bunch of teams that's a roll. oh, rolling thunder they're gonna go straight forward here with the armor he gets off the shadow realm on the cause has to use the kick he got the kick back and there's the burst that's an aegis yes but it's also weaver in an awkward position is he gonna time lapse you get a bkb he does both they yeah, everybody got a can. second lane of barracks but again does that change anything I mean, 30 minutes ago, it was don't focus the racks. At this point, it almost feels like kill the racks before somebody else gets kicked in and get the hell out. The times have changed. But the scary part is, what if they get Megas? Then they have to hit tier fours. Then you're just even closer to being kicked into the fountain. Let's go even deeper They actually here. went outside their base, though. Evil geniuses decide to go and fight aggressively into him. They have the ace. Ace in trouble. Got him on the overgrowth. Smile, C Smile chasing after him, but he's already got the floats down heel. Back up the full. C Smile trying to get out of here. Duraccio chasing after him. He's going to bring him down. Big crits coming in. Massive damage. A sun strike run in the edge, but Whisper will make be way And because he not for once. They find the Dark Willow. Take the damage out of the fight. Force a shaker buyback. Matthew somehow survived off the octarine cooldowns on the snowball without an evil Aegis. geniuses who break ranks first. They were the ones who were holding this high ground for so long. They decided to take a fight outside of it and it immediately goes bad. And that was the weird opportunity to choose it, right? That was just an awkward go up the hill from Whisper that it ended up being super deep. You almost get the bristle back. But it ends up just being too far. You overextend, show your backline, and the second Duraccio finds Bacaz, I mean, he, 
I'm sure he enjoyed that kill with some crits. Oh, yeah. He has been getting pummeled the whole game, but finds his revenge. And now, no buyback on two EG cores. You know gaming want to press the advantage here. Wayne's got an idea, which is Rolling Thunder goes straight into the enemy and just create some space. Now he's taking a ton of damage. He's gotta be careful of this. One see if he can roll away before the Shadow Realm second round comes in. He does manage to get out. They get a tier three. Oh, they got Matthew. Oh, Matthew being pulled away. Who's kicking who? He is gonna have to lose his buyback here. And Quinn's back and in the base. Quinn. Yeah, Quinn, as long as Quinn doesn't die here, this is all space, but the final hit. Oh, oh, hold the tower. Oh, so close. <laughs> But Quinn stays alive. You gotta be careful, son. That Rolling Thunder is not protecting you anymore. And the buildings are dying. And by the way, we have a Divine disassembled on Whisper right now. He can assemble that at any point in this fight. If he sees the opportunity for a big hit, it might not be because you have to worry no. about. This Starbreaker is gonna launch you into the next game right here if it connects. But that's the big question. Can you connect it right now if you're Whisper? And at which point do you assemble Divine right now? Still three buybacks down for EG. They got Matthews out of all that when it was said and done. So once more, if you're gaming, you must throw yourselves into the breach. You must press the advantage here. And maybe they only need to do it one more time to get the Megas just once assembled. more into the breach. Whisper does have that Divine ready to go. He is not going to pick the time. Crits. A second one queued up already. Surprised that gaming are giving him the breather and waiting. Okay, there's the hex on Tofu. So that is the big item I was thinking was gonna come out earlier. This is really nice because Tofu can basically be ghost walked on the back end of a fight or whatever and instantly catch up Lincoln off one of these cores if you don't preemptively BKB. Especially even in the longer fights, it's huge for locking down the cause out of a shadow realm. You've got two seconds to find him between I mean, if he's race. fast enough, what if he catches Matthew on the blinking? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It yeah. can absolutely turn these fights, especially when there's no buybacks on EG's side. This is them being pushed to the limit here in game one. Now the rolling thunder. Here it comes, the initiation. What is EG going to be able to do about this? Their building is going to be hit. Just take the rack. There doesn't seem to be much they can do to stop it. Panda's going to jump in with the overgrowth, trying to slow this down with the glyph also being used. Terrorize trying to push him away with the BKBs. Gaming Gladiators committed to getting the Megas, but can they get it? Not quite enough to finish off Tofu, but here comes Whisper. Looks to finish him off. A oh, snowball oh, oh. sword bounce back. That's keeping Tofu alive. Well, Whisper is Divine Raper is in trouble, and he gets burst down by Duraccio. Divine on the deck because now fighting to keep them in the game as evil geniuses are going to be limping along here. A massive net worth deficit. Vegas. Oh, see smile. Round two. It's an opportunity. What the heck? Inside. The heck doesn't save him. Bacaz puts him down, but Whisper will fall for a second time. Three dead with no buybacks. Make that a fourth. Panda can buy back, but it's Panda and Bacaz, the P duel against Game and Gladiators as a full five stack. And the tip from Daraccio <laughs> may have had me early, but in the ultra late, there can only be one. Double hex from the gaming supports just broke that high ground fight. And now you have a divine on celery. The true carry has yeah, arrived. Look at him. He is doing the most game. damage. Duraccio, they just lean into the buildings. That is going to be it. Evil geniuses will call it 69 minutes. What a night.